Like, so we're trying to get our shit together, but we've got to right some wrongs. We're on a like podcast business 12 step recovery program where like, we, <laughs> it's like we, we have, have to prove to people for a while <laughs> that we've got our shit together. Like, we can't expect that we suddenly put all our podcasts in the one feed, get them out regularly, and, um, you know, some of it starts to make, the numbering starts to make sense. Have a strategy and, with you know when what? we release certain episodes. We know that. We know what we're doing. But it's hard for us to expect just because we've changed for everybody else to immediately know that we have changed. So we, I think we now have to, like, prove to people that this isn't just a phase that we're going through. Yeah, this, this is, is, we're here. We're, yeah. we're here. We've cleaned up our act. We want to marry you. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're here, saying. we're queer. We're down on one knee. <laughs> like, come on, you're getting close to 40. We're both a bit desperate. Yeah, <laughs> we need totally. to make this work because there are not a lot of options out there. <laughs> I mean, I love the idea that you said I'm getting close to 40, by the way, which no, is No, no, as in like, metaphorically speaking, oh. where people freak out when they get close to 40. And then they're like, oh, I need to find someone oh, to marry. I thought you were with. talking about me. I was like, no. that'd be great if I was close to 40. Oh, no, I'm no, as no, far no. away from 40 as you can get the, while still being in 40. The good news is our podcast metaphorically is near 40. The yeah. bad news is in real life, you're closer to 50 and yeah. it's all bad. What does uh, that make it in like, you know, say the dog the years, dog horse years. years sort of thing? So okay, if you're so saying that 13, 13 years, years is the equivalent of being 40, this is going so to infuriate Adam Spencer. Well, it's close to four but, years, maybe less. Three and a half years. For three, every human yeah. year is three and a half yeah. years. Well, that's that right? suitably confusing. So let's... <laughs> is that not, is that right? <laughs> let's... Like, you know what? Let's just well, round look, up a little. Well, 13 years, three times 13 three. is 39. Yeah, exactly. Years, so I think yeah. that's right. You're approaching 40. That's your... <laughs> so let's just say, yes, one year in podcasting is three podcasting years. So yeah, we're... No, one podcasting in life is three years in podcasting. Yeah. No, so I get that. Yeah, it's grown up so quick. And so now our podcast Well, that, that is, makes a lot of sense in our journey too because at the start it was very infantile. Very infantile. <laughs> and then we got sort of like emo and teenage. Yeah, that's true. It was true. all like dark and stuff. Yeah. And then we sort of started to – we decided we wanted to go to like art school. That's when Foz Dyke started doing the episode totally. art. Yeah, that, yeah that's you right. Know, we were exploring. Of, there was a lot we, of dicks. You, you had a gap year. Yeah. <laughs> We tried a few relationships. We dated yeah. with Planet Broadcasting. That's right. We, we had, dated with Wooshka. We had some open and open relationships yeah. with each other. Started seeing some other people. Had friends come and go. <laughs> we went our own separate ways. I mean, yeah, I guess we sort true. of you know we did we did different things. We mm. did our own separate streams, and now we're desperate because mm. we feel the, uh, the the cold hand of mortality <laughs> wrapping around our throat. And it's like we need some security. We need some income. We need mm. like a permanent place and we need a partner we can rely on. The partner is the audience. The income is, 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 is Patreon and any sponsorship we get. But we're, we're serious. We've got our shit together. And, it, and you know what I love as well is you, you, we went our separate ways, but there was never any breakup. Yeah. So one of the things that's always fascinated with me with the former Fofop, now Tofop with friends available in this Tofop feed, if you like that show, you can go to our Patreon page, which is what this great riff is all about. <laughs> but um, I've got a great button for this riff, but keep going. If there were, like, when we did our own separate things, even when we were doing Fofop, like, yep. separately, like, so, you know, we were each hosting that. It was always interesting to me, like, we never discussed it. But it wasn't like a breakup because it wasn't a breakup. Like, I think if it was a breakup, much like in a breakup, you might go, well, I'm going to kind of be closer to this friend. They're going to be there for me. Whereas like that friend is going to be yeah. there for you. And we I didn't divide that. up our friends like assets. At all. In <laughs> fact, some of them absolutely floated across both of us, which yeah. I was always like, I, I never knew if that meant anything. I mean, there was... <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's good. It means we've got some all rounders in our friendship group. You do yeah. players, swing men and women. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I never thought yeah. about it like that. I mean, I feel like I am a real swing man. I don't think I'm anyone's like starting 18. Mm. Or maybe I'd say like I'm in some. What do you I, mean? You're, no, sorry. you're Tofop starting 18. You're yeah, yeah, like, no. you're the key. Partner in this, like, I mean, it's you and I. We're Tofop. No, sorry, I'm and then that we have an extended Tofop family, but we're a team, man. You're yeah. like first picked in, on this team. I'm talking in friendship. Like, you, we're talking yeah. about we have friends who are swimming. Yes. And I'm thinking about my friendship groups. And I'm like, I don't really know that I have like 
a best friend, but I have like alternating best okay, friends. Just yeah, people sure. I spend more time in different with. situations. Yeah, so I think mm-hmm. I am, that's that's me. I'm the utility player. Like yeah. I am, I've been on a lot of people's podcasts. <laughs> you, t- you two are well, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, you, that's right. Like I, I think this of uh, Cameron James. In fact, so Cameron, uh, so this doesn't feel like I'm. Uh, speaking out of school in any way about something that I've said to Cam. Cam, Cam works on Gruen. He does a day of writing on Gruen a week. And uh, um, Cam and Alexia are back, by the way, with a brand new special podcast. Features. Special features, which is hilarious. Uh, they, Alexia had this riff in an episode they were doing, it will be a couple of weeks ago when people are hearing this, but it's a new podcast. You should check it out. But about uh, Jerry Maguire and Jeremy Guire. <laughs> how, he, how he thought his name was Jeremy Guire and it was making me laugh the idea Jerry of this Maguire. guy Jeremy Guire <laughs> and like oh my god it was so funny anyway I recommend you check that out but I think that I was saying to this to Cam as a compliment but um I call him the chameleon and the reason for that is that his sense of humor almost adapts to situations so Mm. when he's on with alexi like he just goes so easily into alexi's world and that sense of humor but when he comes and does a day on gruen he so easily just transforms into what we need for that job which isn't necessarily that other thing and when you hear him with becky lucas he's like got a different energy because he like fits into and he just has this great like he's very good at like going into a situation immediately knowing what the other person needs but also being able to not just facilitate that other person, but be equally good in that scenario or in he's, that situation. He's the talented Mr. James. Yeah. You can just insert him into any situation. He assimilates almost to an unsettling level. Yeah. Like, he's a scroll. He's a scroll. <laughs> Rip his face off. He's a scroll. <laughs> That's a good skill set to have. Yeah, right. I mean, but you would, I mean, you would have gears that you work in. I mean, oh, the is one gear, Gruen is another gear. Like you would adapt to bending. Oh, no, I think I'm a, I'm, I'm pretty good in everybody's worlds. Like I tend to be able to recognize, it's why, like I do a whole bunch of different radio things publicity wise for the telly mm. shows. And you'll, you'll be speaking to everyone because of the nature of those shows. You often have very, So my Wednesday, which is my press day, like I can be talking, go from talking to, you know, having like huge, like funny, like bizarre riffs with like Nova breakfast in Perth, you know, who are just this like absolutely bananas breakfast show that's been doing it for 15 years who I just absolutely love and will riff about whatever's happening in the background of the Zoom and whatever to ABC half an hour with Richard Glover seriously talking about the issues behind the stories we're talking about on Gruen to like somebody who wants to talk to you about the footy on the weekend because that's the way they're going to plug like, you know, Gruen. And so I think, yes, like going into those situations and knowing what they need from me in those situations. But I would think probably that I'm still mostly me. I just know which me to bring to those situations. Whereas I think Cam has like a skill that is like, I think if you walked into a room and I'm doing like a footy interview, I can say all the things that would make them laugh and whatever. But you'd, if someone came in and said, which one of these people doesn't belong in the studio, you'd immediately point to me and go, it's, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. it's clearly that guy. Whereas with Cam, I don't think if, if you didn't know that he did a podcast with Becky Lucas, you just assume Cam is the Cam you hear with Alexi on his podcast or vice versa. And it is a little, talented mr ripley like it's one of those things that if he wasn't using it for comedy he could Mm. definitely use it for evil for evil right (laughs) yeah (laughs) i think i have an element of being able to do i can talk to anyone like i do not get intimidated by having a conversation with anyone it's true on any topic like i quite enjoy it i won't say i'm as i'm good at having returning the conversation but i'm good at listening to people talk about stuff that i i either have not thought about or I, I'm not good at, and I can keep the ball in the air. Yeah. And the well, one do you thing- know why it is? I, I think here's why? my observation. Cause we had an example of this recently, which is um, uh, we were talking to Ilias or Elias mm. uh, uh, and for a series uh, that's going to be on the toe foot feet um, about the biggest stories in all of Norway. And 
neither of us knew him before we went into this interview and he's you know in a you know a different country he has english as his second language and he's telling us stories about his life and in that situation where the two of us are essentially interviewing someone trying to keep the ball in the air with somebody it was we don't really ever use those skills together That's like right. in that situation it was probably the first time really we'd done something like that and i was interested to observe the different ways that we did that and what i noticed is and this is not uh, this will sound oh god no this will no <laughs> honestly Strong feedback no this is good like this is something i admire like okay. i need to say this up front is absolutely something i admire but i think it speaks to this and it's my problem because i've spoken about this before on the podcast is if someone mistakes me for someone else or whatever I'll just mostly the time just go along with it because it's like, I just don't want to get into whatever the thing is. Or if I'm confused, I won't ask. I'll just assume that I can work it out later. Whereas you are just happy to ask an obvious question. And like, I know that the reason I preface that was, I know that sounds like an insult, but, but it's not. I think this is the secret to why you're good with anyone is I'm too embarrassed sometimes to not know about the thing they're talking about, whereas you are a bit more straightforward of going, I'm just happy to ask like simple questions about anything. And I think that's an approach. If that's your approach, then that you can take that to anything because yeah. by asking those simple questions, you find out if, if at any stage, your method is if at any stage you feel like you don't know what's going on, you will stop the person and ask them to clarify what's going on. Whereas <laughs> I will be like, oh, I must have missed something. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm going to keep quiet. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> well, here's my secret. I never know what's going on all the time. That's why it's not hard for me to ask what's going on. Like, I... I I was talking to a friend who we had, we've had a lot of guests come stay over the last three weeks, which has been great, but also quite exhausting at the same time. And I was saying to the last one to stay that it's been so great because all the friends we've had come to stay all really good conversationalists. Like you can sit down and talk about anything. And the one thing I hate the most and the reason why I'd say most people avoid social situations is when you get into that conversation with someone that you've just met it's your partner's workmate or whatever mm. and you start talking and it's obviously stilted or awkward or whatever so that's when i will normally say something silly or irreverent or whatever to try and see if we can pivot this around okay so we're not yeah. been, we can't communicate this how's the weather kind of thing so and then that person every now and then rather than go oh what a great offering hey let's just like get loose and like talk about it. They'll say, that's a weird thing to say. <laughs> that's an odd thing to bring up. And I'm always like, yeah, motherfucker. It's, I've said something weird because this is an incredibly awkward situation. I'm trying to get some momentum going. Like rather than just shutting it down, how about you just, look, we're in this weird social situation. We don't know each other, but we're expected to talk to each other. So let's just make it fun. Yeah. All right. I'm offering you something silly. I'm saying something on you. Rather than stopping everything down and commenting on how weird that observation was, how about you just fucking roll with it? Because you are boring and this is boring me and I don't want to be in this situation. Um, I think I'm fine at small chat, but I'm not somebody who seeks it out, right? Like, I think that's my issue. Like, that I'm, it's almost like, I'm like, man, I do this for a living. I yeah. like, it feels like. You're getting like the bare I... minimum <laughs> of what I'm capable of. I'm it's not like... on the clock. Like, <laughs> yes. my heart's beating. <laughs> There's lung air in my lungs, and I will vocalize occasionally, but that is it. Well, it just feels like, you know, the equivalent of if I was talking to a, like a physiotherapist, I'd be like, all right, well, I'll be funny during this chat if you give yeah. my shoulders a rub during the chat. I can, yeah, right. You know what what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you're not just going to give away that gear for free. I was listening to a couple of comics talking on um, uh, Aaron Gox and, and Broden talking on his footy podcast. Oh, yeah. And they were talking about like that thing of being asked, oh, you're a comedian, tell us a joke. And uh. like, you know, how they never have anything prepared. And Gox is like, oh, you know, I'm more of a storyteller. I'm not like a joke guy. But maybe as comedians, we should all have that just a joke locked and loaded so that when that mm. inevitable question comes up, you can just deliver it without sort of putting too much brain power into it. Have you got one of those? Yeah. I like to do a full nine minute uh, version of the aristocrats. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> <laughs> 
and then I just turn to them and I say, uh, what's the name of the act? The Aristocrats. Five stars, <laughs> mate. Thanks for listening. <laughs> to see the full video, join our Patreon. Patreon.com slash TOEFOP.